Hey, good morning, everybody. Mark again here with Weatherman Plus. Happy Monday to all of you. Now, we had a few tornadoes yesterday as well. I got your information for you. And the pattern is going towards what the GFS says. Look like these monster storms are starting to push away into the Atlantic. Now, we still have one more that's pretty far away. It's about nine days away. I expect that to push away as well. But it's still bringing some systems to our U.S. And it is bringing some potential major snowfall. We still have a couple of storms that are still coming. They're going to be some weak storms and they are going to bring some snowfall. And with all these storms adding up, it will create major snowfall, just not at one time. If you've never been here before, hello, my name is Mark. I upload all year long. Make sure you hit that subscribe button. I do do my best for you. And thank you all for sharing yesterday and hitting that like and getting the video suggested to new people because a lot of people did not know about the severe weather that has happened yesterday also. So thank you so much, great job. Now we had a lot of big warnings when that cell went through Mississippi, but we had a tornado in Louisiana and we had two in Alabama yesterday. Now remember all the links are in the description to help save you time and so you can see these for yourself. There was some tornado damage in Louisiana yesterday to a couple of trailers and to a home with some trees down and such. This video is by Live Storms Media. I did put the link in the description so you can go see it. I have some more by Live Storms Media that shows the tornadoes. There was a lot of damage though, guys. But I do have these links in the description from Live Storms Media so you can go see the damage itself. He took it from his drone. A lot of damage, guys. And here's a better look at the whole area that got destroyed. Ran right through it. Look at that. The one in Evergreen, Alabama, it did not quite touch down, but it was trying to. It was trying to get all the way to the ground. But it was some severe weather passing through, y'all. But it did become a tornado over Alabama. This was in Evergreen. And I also got this video for you. It's by Brave Spirit. It was a tornado that was trying to touch down in Jackson, Alabama, which eventually did. And here's a better look at that tornado, and it was a huge tornado so remember go to the links in the description i have them by brave spirit live storms media I have everybody's links in there for you so you can go watch these videos now everything has calmed down greatly at least for the next few days and before these storms comes guys you still have advisories for wind and for cold temperatures so the links are in the description for your weather alerts make sure to go click on your area and it'll tell you everything you need to know now when we look at the ensembles to see what's expected as we go into thursday and friday the 13th and the 14th this first system is more than likely going to form up over Atlantic while we get this clipper system that's going to move through that will be dropping some snowfall. But as you can see, the system strengthens up away from the northeast. So it is not doing that deep dive into the northeast, dropping a ton of snowfall. It will be far away. You might get a little bit on the edge of the New England states, not a whole bunch. As this weak clipper passes through in five days and goes out through the mid-Atlantic. Doesn't help form up to anything soon. It tries, but it's pretty weak. Now, when you look according to the Euro, in four days, we start getting that clipper coming through Canada, and we get our system forming up off the East Coast. And more than likely, according to the Euro, it is still going to pull away, guys. Just like the GFS says, this is not going into the Northeast. There will be some add-up that comes to y'all, but nothing major. And as that clipper comes through in five days through the Ohio Valley, it is going to be dropping snowfall, but it's still a weak storm. And on the way out, might strengthen. Now, this is still a little too far away. This is all the way to the 16th and 17th. But there's a chance that this still could form up, according to the Euro, and drop a little bit of weather on y'all as it's still pulling away. It's not doing a deep dive into the corner. <laughs> now GFS is still showing all these systems still coming from the south and we could get a surface low on the 13th and 14th that could pass over Florida bringing some rainfall to northern Bahamas some potential 30 40 miles per hour wind gusts but as you can see it's going to form up over the Atlantic not causing any effects to the northeast then on the 15th we get that clipper that's moving through the upper midwest goes through the Ohio Valley and leaves out the mid-Atlantic and it's going to be a one-two punch as this goes off into the Atlantic. We're going to have another clipper system that's come right behind that one. And with both of these together, they will add up to some major snowfall. As you know, we're still in this pattern. As we get in that second clipper, we still have another second upper level low that forms in the Gulf of Mexico. And it will go over the southeast and strengthen up over the mid-Atlantic according to the GFS. And it will come to the northeast. 
Now this is still the 18th and the 19th and it's bringing it right up the coast with a potential add up of snowfall for the northeast along the coast. And it's still too far away guys but a system coming on the 20th and the 22nd I'm still showing it's going to have a nice front tail to it and it's still going to bring some severe weather. It's going to be our next severe weather in the south. So I will update you on that as well. Now the euro shows as we go to the 13th and the 14th that that first surface flow is not going to form so early. It's going to form later around the Bahamas and off into the Atlantic. At the same time, we get that surface low coming through the Ohio Valley and meet up together and they both push away together. No monster storm, guys. GFS is correct. So far, it's pushing into the Atlantic. And that second clipper coming through the 14th and 15th does have a chance, according to the Euro and GFS, for all this snowfall. And it adds up in about the same places. But it confirms it does get a surface low in the south. This will create some severe weather. And that's the one that could go up to the north and look at it pushing away both of them are pushing away so from now to the 16th and 17th we have a couple clippers that is moving through the upper midwest ohio valley and some potential severe weather in the south that will bring something to the mid-atlantic and northeast as well and this will change a little bit but both models are seeing about the same pattern now according to the euro after you get a couple clippers coming through that you will have some snowfall, one to five inches for Wisconsin, but you got major snowfall for anywhere from eight to 10 inches from Minnesota, Iowa, and Western Illinois, as it goes towards Ohio Valley and bringing some snowfall to this Tennessee, Kentucky Valley, and a potential wraparound snowfall for the Carolinas. Nothing for the Northeast. And the West Coast, you're still on that high ridge on that warm up for quite some time. The only people that are getting any kind of precipitation on the West Coast is gonna be Northern Washington. That's going to be it, and that's going to go away as well. But you can see with the precipitation, very light amounts of precipitation. Everybody's going to get anywhere from a quarter of an inch to maybe a half an inch of rainfall in the next seven days. Maybe an inch in southern Alabama. A little too far to be sure about that. But it is showing that there is some add-up towards Bahamas of rainfall. And the GFS looks almost the same as the Euro. You got the major snowfall from Minnesota, but it comes a little bit into Wisconsin, not as much as Iowa, a little bit of a sharper turn on that second clipper. And it does put some over the Western Ohio Valley. So there is a difference. So we definitely need to stay update on this snowfall amounts because both models is showing two different things for the Ohio Valley, almost the same thing for the upper Midwest. But the GFS isn't seeing that wraparound snow for North Carolina and South Carolina. It's showing it's only gonna be higher elevations. Also a green, the only rainfall we're going to have in the next seven days is going to be upper Washington, a little bit for southern Alabama, but you can see there is some add up for the Bahamas as well. Now all these links I have in the description for y'all to go check on them in the Bahamas, I have this for you. You have the Euro and GFS right here, and you can go three day and five day. Your three day precipitation brings a couple inches across you, plus you get an inch or so for Boca Raton, Florida, and Miami. And that's according to GFS and Euro from that Boca Raton or Miami is going to get an inch of rainfall the next three days as this disorganized thunderstorm passes by and creates a surface low. The next five days, GFS shows it's going to get a little bit heavier for northern Bahamas, to up to an inch and a half of rainfall and an inch and a half for Boca Raton and for Miami. Euro shows that it forms up later than GFS, still brings an inch to Boca Raton and Miami, Florida, but it's bringing two inches or more over the center of the Bahamas and less for the northern. So from northern Bahamas to central Bahamas, just be aware you got precipitation coming that's not quite narrowed down yet. Forming later and coming more southern, Euro is showing that it could be some 40 miles per hour wind gusts, high 30s for northern Bahamas as this passes by, also for eastern Florida, some 30 miles per hour wind gusts. GFS isn't showing that. GFS shows that goes up on that high ridge through the mid-Atlantic and you might be in some high 20s. But when that second clipper comes through around the 14th, Euro is showing that it's bringing 40, 50, even 60 miles per hour wind gusts to the upper Midwest. And it will go all the way to the south into the Gulf of Mexico and out by the Bahamas, bringing potential 40 to 50 miles per hour wind gusts. All the other high winds is in the Atlantic Ocean. It's not affecting anyone else. And the GFS is showing that the clipper that we're getting now, the first clipper, will be bringing... 40, 50, even 60 miles per hour wind gusts. It will calm down as it goes down by the Dakotas and be 40 and high 40 miles per hour wind gusts, but it will get right back up to the 50s for the upper Ohio Valley, 40s for the lower Ohio Valley, and the intercoastal northeast. That's it. No other major impacts. 
And when that second one forms up, it shows it goes into the Atlantic. It don't hit nobody, maybe a little tip of Maine. That's about it. And the temperatures, a little update on that, guys. It looks like GFS was right on that also. As you go into the 17th, it starts bringing cold air to the south and the southeast as we get these storms build up, front-induced. As you see, that's your best chance right there, and that is on the 18th. So we still got an update. It's still over a week away. <laughs> I expect this to move further and further offshore. An update on the AO on a Euro, the Arctic Oscillation, lets us know how much cold air we're getting. Cold air came down, forming this clipper, but now we're going back up to a higher ridge. After that, it's going to be a little bit of a warm-up again. Not super 60s or anything, but well above average temperatures. But we have another low cold spill coming on the 15th with that next clipper. And as you can see, it retracted all the way back. Not a lot of cold air coming with it. All this cold air, instead of stretching out, is going to tighten up to the northeast. I'll show you with the MJO. GFS also agrees that it's going up on that higher ridge, a little bit warmer now as we get in this clipper that we're getting through, so it's not going to be a whole bunch of snowfall, but it will add up because we have the other clipper coming around the 14th or 15th, bringing a little bit of cold air. But as we go into the 17th and 18th, GFS is showing it will be a little bit deeper of cold air. It won't be super deep like it showed before. We are going up on a high ridge with this cold air, guys. And you can see here with the MJO from the GFS. And as you can see, it first predicted two weeks that it was going to be a little dip of cold air. But as you go to the one week, you can see obviously it is going up on a high ridge. And this is to the northeast. This is the northeast right here. You look at your MJO according to the Euro. You can see also after you go from the 10th through the 12th and 14th, it's just going to start going up into a high ridge. But your highs are going to warm right back up. And there's no negative temperatures in the south. This will be affecting the Northeast, maybe the Upper Ohio Valley and the Midwest. And that's the update, guys. All good news. We do have major snowfall coming, but we have a clear pattern for quite some time. If you enjoyed this update, show support, hit that like button. I do appreciate it. And God bless all of you and your family. And I am glad that y'all heeded the warnings on the severe weather. Now today I'm going to talk about Psalm 33. Rejoice in the Lord, O ye righteous, for praise is comely for the upright. Praise the Lord with harp. Sing unto him with the psaltery and an instrument of ten strings. Sing unto him a new song. Play skillfully with a loud noise. For the word of the Lord is right, and all his works are done in truth. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. By the word of the Lord were the heavens made, and all the host of them by the breath of his mouth. He gathereth the waters of the sea together as in heap. He layeth up the depth in storehouses. Let all the earth fear the Lord. Let all the inhabitants of the world stand in awe of him. For he spake, and it was done. He commanded, and it stood fast. The Lord bringeth the counsel of the heathen to naught. He maketh the devices of the people of none effect. The counsel of the Lord standeth forever, the thoughts of his heart to all generations. Blessed is a nation whose God is the Lord, and the people whom he hath chosen for his own inheritance. The Lord looketh from heaven. He beholdeth all the sons of men. From the place of his habitation he looketh upon all the inhabitants of the earth. He fashioneth their hearts alike. He considereth all their works. There is no king saved by the multitude of an host. A mighty man is not delivered by much strength. And a horse is a vain thing for safety. Neither shall he deliver any by his great strength. Behold. The eye of the Lord is upon them that fear him, upon them that hope in his mercy, to deliver their soul from death and to keep them alive in famine. Our soul waiteth for the Lord. He is our help and our shield. For our heart shall rejoice in him, because we have trusted in his holy name. Let thy mercy, O Lord, be upon us, according as we hope in thee. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> God bless you all. Have a very great day today. I'll keep you updated on these clippers and the potential storms, okay? Thank you again. 
for visiting my channel today. <laughs> Have a very blessed Monday. And all power, all glory does go to Yahweh, God of Jacob, our Father. <laughs> and we hope in thee. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah, guys. Have a very safe day. Have a very fun day. Make sure you bundle up in those cold temperatures. <laughs>